Books, books, sometimes they suck. Books, books, they make us say fuck. Two trouts. In search of author. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Two Trouts in Search of an Author. Uh, I'm David. And I'm Jai. And, and this week's author is Garth Marenghi, and the novel is Slicer. Uh, the no. novel is uh, Night Watcher, and the author is Garth Marenghi. Uh, no, the no, close. The author You're is close, though. James E. Murphy, and James... the book is Night Watcher. James F. Murphy F. Jr. Son of a bitch. Yeah, don't worry about it. <clears throat> yes, uh, this week's novel is Night Watcher by James F. Murphy, as we just said three times. Nin- um, 1980, not quite. 1982. Horror, quote unquote. Yes, it is a horror book this week. Yes. Horror book. And it is a travesty on every level. It is level. a piece of shit. <laughs> anyway. I hate this book so much. <laughs> oh, I've been holding uh, it in all day. Just saving it for this um, podcast. Sh- sh- should I uh, give the brief plot synopsis? Yes, yes. Please give a plot synopsis. <laughs> all right. Well, Night... I'll, I'll sit back and yeah. just stew. Night Watcher is the tale of a sleepy seaside town, the town of Dorset. It is rocked by a series of mysterious disappearances and murders. The book wastes no time in revealing that the murderer is Eric Toole, the deceptively simple janitor of the local high school. The high school, designed by Tony Palmer, who is basically a celebrity, I, I don't know why. For some reason. Why the fuck is that? An architect, whatever. Also an alcoholic. Yeah, I guess. Everyone in this book is like a piece of shit alcoholic. Yeah, totally. Anyway, um, the high school is attended by Tony's son, Christopher Palmer, and also is taught by the teacher, Meg Malloy. After the disappearance of one of the teachers and the deaths of two others by Piranha, we'll get into that, um, the suspicion (laughs) falls upon Chris Palmer... As he's an edgy loner kid. Yep. And he passively made a couple of really empty threats that every edgy high school kid makes. Yep. Um, Also, he's a drug dealer. Oh, yeah. Also, Meg Malloy is an undercover cop. Yep. Um, Eric Toole evades capture like a million times in really dumb ways. Uh, So he finally decides to seal the deal by... Killing Chris Palmer makes it look like a suicide, and thus absolving him of any suspicion whatsoever. Yep. And at the very end, Meg Malloy realizes Eric is the killer, but he has already fled. Yeah. And she decides to chase after him, and the novel ends that way. And that is basically the plot of the book. (laughs) Yep. That's, I'm, we're gonna get into specifics, so... So, anyway, David, we know you think this is a piece of shit, but what did you think of the book? Well, I guess we can start from the outside in. First, oh, yes, uh, yes. Do we let's, have anything to say about the author? Let's, uh, well, let's do cover judgment first. Okay. Cover judgment. As you can see, it is a, that's a buoy. In case you don't know. Oh, is it? That's supposed to be a buoy. Like oh, a beached, that makes a lot more sense. A beached sea buoy with a hole in it and the arm is sticking through. I was going to say, no one got encased in an Easter egg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and as you can see, the ghost of Eric Toole is up in the in the top left corner. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I guess this kind of happened. Cause, I guess. Because I guess it's a sensationalist version of something that happened. Yeah. One of the murders is that uh, Eric Toole... Uh, rapes and strangles. He does not rape her. Oh, he doesn't rape her? No, he gets close. He's all like, I'm gonna rape you. And then he's like, nah, I'm just gonna drag you here and throw okay. you in. Throw you in the buoy. Yeah, keeps her in a beached buoy for like weeks until she starves to death. Well, and then and crabs dies. start plucking and, out her eyes. Yeah, and dies of exposure. So, it actually happened, I guess. I suppose. And there's... Eric Tool yucking it up, and uh, this is Lillian. Although, the whole don't go out after dark in Dorset, not if you want to live. Yeah. I mean, I guess all the murders happen after dark. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, it is not a novel of nerve-wrenching terror, though. No, not, not particularly. Uh, <laughs> it's barely a horror book. It's more of a 
I mean... It's more of a thriller. A thriller. It wants to be a horror novel, but let's be honest, it's it's not. Yeah, it's not very scary. Well... For one thing... (laughs) No, no, it's not. For one thing, you know from the very beginning that Eric Toole is the murderer. Like, it tells you in the very first chapter, in the prologue. Anyway... uh, What do we... Uh, what do we think of James F. Murphy? Who is he? Um, James F. Murphy has very little information about himself. He has no Wikipedia. No, no Wikipedia. Not like a fan site or anything. He has a Facebook. He has a Facebook. We found his Facebook, and he is a dad. Mm-hmm. He is the most dad of all authors. <laughs> he published another thriller novel, I think, before Night Watcher. Uh huh. It has. And he posted on his Facebook page the original cover for it. And it is, like, really crappy, like, <laughs> kind of Night Watcher-esque. There's an arm sticking out of a van, so he has an arm theme going on. Yeah. And he says that he loved that cover because it portrayed the sense of dread. Okay. While the hardcover copy was kind of lame. And I think I found the hardcover cover Oh yeah. of it. And, I mean, it is lame, but it's better than the not it's it's basically as lame as that other one <laughs> okay i mean to be fair if we found that other one we would definitely pick it up over the hardcover copy but we also judge books by their covers so yes so definitely he is a dad he wrote a couple books in the 80s and he's kind of drifted off he wrote a book about baseball i believe i oh, think that okay. might be his latest one he recently published an ebook and I think it's about baseball. Okay. So he's he just wrote a couple books and then faded into obscurity, as far as I, I know. I think he was always in obscurity. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, I'm sure. I, I don't think this appeared on any, like, bestsellers list. Mm, like, I hope not. I mean, I think all the other books we have done so far, like... Have spent some time ha- like, like, in some sort of public, public yeah, consciousness. Yeah. Um, Like, China Command, that's still going on, that series. Yeah. Slocum's Run is still going on. Uh, Downward to the Earth is by an acclaimed author. Yeah. Um, I guess Strip for Murder. Strip for Murder. No, Strip for Murder. That was still part of a pretty popular series. It was part of a larger series, yeah. Yeah. Which was, I guess, pretty popular. And, of course, Harlequin Romance is a... Is a yeah an established so, publishing house. I, I I think this book is the book. This why is the we, lowest. This, I I think this is why we started the podcast. Yes, honestly, we were waiting for this one. I, I feel like this book is why we started this. Not just because of how obscure it is, but also because of how dreadful it is. Yeah, it deserves to be obscure. So let's let's uh, make it unobscure by right. talking about it. I would like to propose that we talk about things we like first, because uh, the things we don't like is way longer. All right. I, I will say this right off the bat. I enjoyed this book. <laughs> yeah. I, enjoy, <laughs> I, I enjoyed hating this book. I enjoyed it because it is absolutely without like any redeeming qualities. <laughs> I feel it is the only book we've done so far. Well, maybe not the only one, but it's the one that most exemplifies a so bad it's good vibe (laughs) i i think all the other ones we have done there's been a few like gray areas and a few like boring parts and this has a few boring parts too but overall it's just such a travesty of like pacing plotting character it's actually kind of offensive it is and we're pretty hard to offend (laughs) it's pretty offensive and I love it. It is so... Yeah, it's pretty fun. It's so awful. I was, like, underlining all the sh- terrible lines. Yeah, you should see how many dog ears I have. <laughs> Just... It's... Every other page is like, oh, I, something terrible, something terrible. And, and I also liked it because I could really just turn off my brain and maybe, like, skip a few paragraphs and yeah. nothing would change. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, I, I think this... Uh is one of the only books I've read where it's so bad it's good. All right. At least for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd be that that uh, generous. All right. I think Let's... it's I think it's pretty it's pretty bad and not and not entertaining at all. Not very entertaining. All right. Well, However, I do have some things that I yes. do like. Let's It tried. Okay. It tried. 
there's yes. there's a some de- some juxtaposition between how decadent the town is, and the town is goddamn decadent. Yes, and they kept bringing up the town's puritanical roots. Uh huh. So there was some interesting juxtaposition between yeah I, how terrible I, everyone is and how religious mm, the town's. I I got a really heavy like blue velvet vibe. Mm-hmm. I mean. It didn't, doesn't really do anything with it, but no, it is like a small town that has this cheery facade, but everyone in it like does drugs or is an alcoholic or is mm-hmm. having an affair. Yeah. And the other thing I liked was that the big set piece murder is where Eric Tool dumps piranhas into yes. the school pool while yes. there's two t- <laughs> there's two teachers having sex in the pool, of course. Yeah, and uh, Eric Tool pours. Piranhas into the pool while they're having sex, and they get eaten by piranhas. And it's the best scene in the book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's basically the best scene. It's the most interest. It's an interesting murder. It's kind. It's slasher movie ish. Yes, it's it gets a bit graphic. They talk about his penis getting sliced up. Yes, by razors. Yes, razor teeth. It's it's also very funny because the reason Eric Tool does it, he has a little thing in his mind like I'm not going to let them infect the school pool. They're Atrocious (laughs) Atrocious <laughs> semen. Oh, I wrote that down. Where is it? It's a. Uh... But the thing is, is he unleashes piranhas, and they talk about how the pool's basically a soup of blood and guts. Yeah. So <laughs> make a note of that. Orgiastic sperm. Yes. Orgastic sperm. Semen not okay. Blood and guts. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So that's one thing I like, and mm-hmm. it somehow managed to make sense with Eric Toole's overall plot, because they bring up they bring up all the time that Chris is interested in tropical fish. Yes. So Eric Toole obviously chose these piranhas with a mind to pinning it on Chris. All right. And that's why that's why piranhas. So I, I, I it, guess it, it somehow managed to make it sense with. I, the, I, I the, still the, felt the like that, plot. that was kind of an afterthought. Like, yeah, it, it might have been an afterthought, but it like it, I, I, I makes some they, sense. They mentioned the tropical fish afterwards. Yeah, like it's one of the reasons why they they su- suspect Chris, and yeah. I think that was on purpose. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. anything else we like? Um, I I do like how decadent everyone is. Just how yeah. <laughs> much of a piece of shit every character is in this book. They have no redeeming qualities. I both like that and extremely dislike that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't really have a character you can root for. Mm, no, not, um, not really. The closest is, I guess, Tony. Yeah. The the architect who but, is the... But he, he's... Uh, you're kind of rooting for him because he's Chris's stepfather and... He... You want... I guess you kind of want him to make up with his son... Which he never does, but he's also an alcoholic, and, and he never does anything. Yes. He is actually completely useless to the plot. Well, to be fair, most everyone is completely useless to this plot. It's true. And it's let, true. let's just get on to All right, the, the big meaty on subject. Like... What didn't we like? Let us count the ways. <laughs> um, okay, Sh- should we dive right into the big biggest part, and that Meg Malloy is a awful fucking character. <laughs> okay, let's get let's get the big gun, the big one out of the way. So, Meg Malloy, school teacher at Dorset High. I think that's what the school was called. Yeah, I I guess. I, I don't fucking care. Um she's a school teacher, but she's also an undercover cop yes. that's posing as a school teacher to try to bust this like teenage drug ring that Chris is a part of and she gets embroiled into this plot and she is really Fucking A, boring, and B, dumb. An idiot. <laughs> Biggest idiot. I, I actually don't think she's so boring because I, I, was her... en- I was entertained by how dumb she was. But also... Oh, oh okay. I, like... I guess later she's a bit more entertaining. But there's a chapter in the beginning where it talks about her like going for a run. Uh-huh. And I just... Oh, yeah. And I was zoned. like glossed over that chapter. <laughs> I'm like, I do not care about this. It's not decadent. Yeah. It's not seedy. They don't talk about dated references like roller discos. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I don't care about this at all. But then later on, she yeah, has she... that scene with Eric Toole. Okay, let's paint the picture here. 
So, Meg Malloy, uh, Lillian has already been kidnapped and yes. stepped into the, the yeah, buoy. Yeah, L- Lillian's uh, a teacher. The first victim. Yes, and that's like the first chapter of the book. Yes. So, uh, they know that this teacher is missing under mysterious and, and suspicious circumstances. So, uh, Meg's car breaks down in the school parking lot. Mm-hmm. So, she decides that she's going to walk home. But Eric comes and offers, uh, her, offers a her a ride. He gives her a ride, but stops in the dunes uh-huh. and starts acting weird and really rapey. Yeah. And actually, he acts weird before. Oh, yeah. Before he acts she weird, even gets in the car. He acts weird, like, with everyone. Yeah, and clearly sabotaged her car further. Yes. Because he goes into the, the engine block, mm. and then she tries it again, and it doesn't. it's completely dead. So they stop in the dunes. Eric starts acting really strange and rapey. Starts acting violent when she mentions, like, Tony Palmer because yeah. she had just had a parent-teacher conference with uh, Tony that day. We, we should also say Eric Toole and Tony Palmer are, like, BFFs. BFFs for life. Yeah. For some reason. I... I yeah. Uh, so he's really obsessive about yeah. Tony. So he starts getting violent when she mentions him. Starts bad-mouthing all the female teachers in the school for being uh, married like, working and being married at the same time. <laughs> uh, we'll get into that a bit later. Or, or not getting married and not planning on getting married. Yeah. Uh, calling themselves uh, Ms. I mean, he had a thing about... That's... He had a they, thing they, about women calling themselves... They, preferring they, to be called Ms. They, they, there was a strange thing in this book. It was Miss and M.S. period. And they... Did it like they were different things? Yeah. Are they different things? There's a I've, very slight difference I've, between Ms. and Miss. I've always read them as like the same thing. One of them is unmarried. One of them is, I don't know, but I'm going to assume that you're unmarried uh, because that's more polite, I guess. I, 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 I just always thought MS is just a lazy way of doing M-I-S-S. Yeah, I think it is, but there's a there's a difference there. I And I, I kept getting confused, like, do they mean Mrs.? <laughs> he, did he forget an R in this abbreviation? <laughs> I, I guess it was just a sign of the times. Yeah. Anyway. Also, uh, so he hates women, clearly. Yes. She asks to be driven home. She starts saying all the things yeah. that he wants to hear, and that saves her life. Yes. And she drives him, he drives her home, and then she doesn't report him for, like, sexual harassment yes. and, like, being really creepy. Because he's the janitor. Yeah. He, he works and, He but, works at the school. Well, he's deceptively simple-minded. Yeah, I guess. All, although they talk about how he's, like, really into philosophy. Yeah, they talk about how... And shit how, like that. But... Yeah, they know he's smart. They, they, they kind of paint him as, you know, like, an idiot savant. I, I guess. I guess. I didn't pick They're, up on that. There's no real, like, indication, but I I felt like they were like, oh, he's too stupid to do anything, (laughs) but he also reads philosophy. Yeah, and he gets what Tony's talking about when he talks about, like, Frank Lloyd Wright. Like, like, like he has a special, like, area that he's really (laughs) smart in, but he's really dumb in other aspects. Yeah, so she doesn't go to her boss at the police department, because... Eric Toole is acting very suspicious, drove her down to the dunes, yes. the local place where you stash bodies, yeah. and doesn't go to the superintendent of the school, and yeah, it's, is just it's, a, it's dumb. an idiot. And there's like that chase scene later in the dunes? Yeah, but that's way later. That's still like, she's being chased by a truck, mm-hmm. and she... A, it's a jeep. A I jeep, think. yes. Yeah. And she keeps thinking, oh, it's Chris Palmer. He's trying to kill me. But do they mention that Chris Palmer has a Jeep? I, in passing. I think they I, do mention that uh, he has a yeah, Jeep. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess I they do. I think everyone's got a Jeep in the town. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's just dumb. It's a very obvious, like, yeah. I'm a serial killer. I'm yeah. going to kill you. Uh, uh okay. Uh, let, let, let me try Let's... to make you not kill me. Whew. Anyway, going on with my day. Yeah, going on with my day. So then, they don't tell you that she's a police officer right off the bat. No. They actually save it for around page 157 of a 200 and... 200-some page book to let you know that she is actually an undercover police officer chasing a drug ring. The drug ring that 
Chris Palmer is yes. at the top of, by the way. Not not at the top, but he's... Oh, he's just a pusher? Yeah, he's, he's just a pusher. He gets... He's still huge. Yeah, like, yeah. He, he still deals to everybody. He, he deals to, like, all the high school kids, but yeah. he has, like, people above him. So next item that she's an idiot about, page 177. Mm-hmm. And I quote uh, about Chris Palmer. He never seemed that bad after that. Sure, she knew he was pushing dope in the high school, <laughs> and she did not condone that, but she'd hoped, hoped that once the big bust came, she could get him some help from someone. So she knew, she yes. knew he was pushing drugs yes, to but all the kids in the school. She's like, wait, I need to settle for the That's big okay. bust. That's okay, but <laughs> she just kind of... And she kind of has a thing for Tony Palmer, I think. Kind of, I, I, I guess. kind of like felt sexual tension during the parent-teacher conference. But then Tony has like his mistress or whatever. Yeah, Tony's got a mistress. I didn't. I, I didn't pick up on any kind of. They had nothing to do with each other. I. I just <laughs> thought it was dumb, and I also thought the mistress was dumb. But so she. So that means she's the worst cop ever. Yes, because she knew about all that and did nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, which would have probably helped. She could have solved the plot at the beginning if she just reported him to yes. the superintendent and got him fired. He has a lot of near misses. Like, there's that old <laughs> yeah. lady that's, I've been seeing you out in the dunes. What are you doing out there? And then he uh, sticks her in the freezer and yeah. she freezes to death. And she just never puts two and two together until the last three pages of yes. the book. And then it's all like, wait. Oh, I He's get creepy. It. That Jeep was his Jeep. Oh! So this is after she botched the murder investigation yes. completely by losing those keys in the swamp. Yes. So she's... And uh, they make a point of... Like, she talks to her um, her chief at the police office, mm-hmm. at the police station. Yeah. And he doesn't trust women, and he's... Like, he doesn't think women should be on the force. Mm-hmm. And so she's... You know, the, the implication is that she's going to try to prove him wrong, and she doesn't. Yes. Her whole thing is that she's a complete failure. Uh-huh. She's a complete... She proves everything right about yeah. everything that Alcott and Eric Toole says about how useless women are. Yes. And I just came away from the book really offended. Yeah. Can we talk about how misogynistic this book is? Oh, yeah. Because it's ultra-misogynistic. I mean, if you haven't picked up on it yet, like... <laughs> well, not just misogynistic. It's confused. It, it doesn't yes. know exact. It doesn't know what it wants it's, to say. I, I, I feel like it's... He's trying to be a little bit progressive, but he grew up in this time where, like, ah, uh, women shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So I'll make, I'll let women do this, and I'll give them, like, a good start, good, but they good, shouldn't, really. A good talking to. <laughs> or a good murder. That'll show them. So murders happen. All the victims are either lesbians, uh, sexually liberated people, yes. persons, having... Sex. Oh, J- no. You know, Jason X. Yes. Sex. Jason X. That's the Friday the 13th movie you go to first. Well, of course, because <laughs> it's got that scene in the holodeck. The... Hey, come on, let's have premarital sex. I mean, that's good. <laughs> but you could just do, like, any slasher flick. <laughs> or they're on drugs. Yes. Or, or they're drug pushers. To be fair, everyone is, like, sexed yeah. up drug pushing. In so this. it's clear that Eric Tool is... Against everything, like all of the liberated runoff of the 60s and 70s. Yeah. So they're murdered by this puritanical yes. maniac. I think they don't make much of, a, of his religion, but he's clearly of old-timey values. I guess. <laughs> whose wife left him because she's a lesbian. Yes, that's my favorite part. His entire reason for wanting to kill the fir- his first victim is because she made out with his wife. Yes. And made her a lesbian. And he's like, lesbianism? <laughs> no! Oh, Eric Toole's backstory. We'll get into Eric Toole's wide backstory a little later. So his mission is to purify the school from sex and drugs. He's racist. He, he Oh, yes. He said, he calls... Like... He's, he calls, a, like, a Toyota a gook car. Yes. He's sexist, obsessive about Tony Palmer. Yes. And it's weird that Tony Palmer hangs out with him. And he's obsessive about the school. He's a sociopath, acts super creepy around all the women. The police are inept and, like, all about politics Uh over justice. It's almost... So there are no good people in this book. No. Like, I... Well, once again, if this was a good book, 
this could be like a statement about, you mm-hmm. know, scummy, like, small town values. Yeah. Like, like a blue velvet, but even then, blue velvet, we had <laughs> yeah. a main character to kind of go off of. And its version of Eric Toole is a lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Chris Palmer, who I, you're, I think you're supposed to identify and root for him. I. But you don't because no, he's a, he's he's a, a piece dr- of shit. He's a piece of shit drug dealer. He's like the worst of he's of dared to keep kids off drugs ads. He's <laughs> like a really edgy loner. Oh, I. <laughs> Yeah, I did not like he Chris pin- Palmer. He pinballs between, uh, like, 80s Reagan-era scary monster, yes. scary drug monster, and, like, scared victim. Uh-huh. And Seemingly at random. Like, it's funny, because they don't even mention, like, he's dealing drugs until... Yeah, way later. And like, he loves it. Oh, yeah. Like, he, he gets a rush on it. He's super... He, like, gets off on it. Uh-huh. Almost sexually. Yeah, on, de- I actually, on dealing drugs and I getting actually people. think sexually because he like has Debbie there yeah although I, I think he like can't get an erection or something oh well I, I don't remember that part very I don't remember. well I, did, I don't remember that it's uh so uh, the story ends where Eric Toole gets off basically scot free yes Tony gives up on his stepson who is seemingly dead. Con- <laughs> committed suicide and is dead and they're like, oh, all the murders were on him. And he it, goes off like, on a journey to get his life back on track. The book insists that he's going to be okay. But he's not going to be okay. He's an alcoholic. He's an alcoholic. And he's picking up another stepson. That's Remember? right! His Holy mi- shit! I his, forgot about that! Because his mistress has a stepson. Yeah! So he's picking up another stepson to ruin and leave in his wake. I just glossed over the entire mistress plot because I felt it was pointless. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And Meg Malloy is co- completely useless. We yes. talked about that. So I have no idea what this book is trying to say or... Uh, it, it has no message. It has no point of it view. Is, it is... I, I think I made a note. It's nihilistic, I guess. Yes, a note right at the end. This is just nihilism. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't get it. Like Confused in it... I wrote down, confused in its politics, conflicted in its ideas, just plain terrible. Yes. And that's also probably why I find it incredibly <laughs> fun. Yeah, it is. There's a certain amount of fun because to be had. it just pinballs everywhere, and it just bounces back and forth. And I don't know what to kind of expect. Like, oh, Chris Palmer. Like they kind of paint him as a misunderstood kid. Mm-hmm. But then, no, he's not misunderstood. He is a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. But then they still try to go. Try to go like, oh, it's just circumstances that got him into this, and he'll redeem himself. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel, Jai. <laughs> how, how do I really feel? It's it 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 is a book that makes you want to take a it's shower a afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's we. I think we've gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves. We skipped right to the ju- the juicy meat, and we skipped over like mechanics. Uh, fuck mechanics. <laughs> well, I, I want to at least. Okay. Okay. Get to let's. It. So Let's... this we can maybe move this to earlier in the podcast. Eh, probably not. Go uh, ahead. Oh well, never <laughs> mind then. Forget I said anything. So the way this is written is it, sometimes it's really purple, like really, really purple. Yes, like the prose. The very and first. That's probably the why I could skip over a lot of the. Yeah, the prologue is. Uh, yeah, I wrote right there. Adjectives. Adjectives. Read me off the first two sentences. The athletic fields lay like quite green, like a quite green quilt under the pale wash of the October moon. The thump of soccer balls and the heavy thud of overweight joggers gasping around the oval track were hushed now. The only sounds were those of the leaf-disturbing breeze and the intermittent groaning of a guttural foghorn from somewhere near the mouth of the canal, three miles below the school on the other side of town. That's the first paragraph. It never gets that bad later. No. But that is still a really awful way to start off yeah. your book. There's a lot of <laughs> lot of unnecessary adjectives, a lot uh-huh. of unnecessary adverbs. Oh yes. Uh page fucking one, there's <laughs> you you saw. Yes. But and it gets down it doesn't get quite as bad later on, but it stays like terrible with th- weird turns of phrases. Oh yeah. Like they say that the the water in the pool is green. Yeah, I guess chloride. I guess, guess, but it would be blue or clear. 
I guess. Maybe the ceiling is, like, <laughs> yeah. green. There's a clumsy mixed metaphors. Everyone's described using, like, how their face yes. resembles a nationality. Uh. And it uses the word puritania to describe the town. Yeah. I, I guess that's trying to draw the contrast between the happy-go-lucky small town and its <laughs> seedier going-ons, but... All right. Here's the stupidest line in the book. Oh, really? I'm going to read the stupidest line in the book. Or the stupidest couple paragraphs. Okay. So, this is a part of a news a news program mm-hmm. that is about the school. The school, indestructible, like a modern Titanic, whose mighty brick could withstand hurricane and flood and tornado, whose essential purpose was to bring a town together, it is that school that has been the victim of evil. A school, a retreat, an oasis for relaxation as well as learning... A common meeting place for all is shut tight as a vault. This Titanic's iceberg has been murder. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that, that's a pretty great line. <laughs> it's iceberg uh, is murder. This, this iceberg is murder. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, when Chris is with Debbie, which is a girl who gets hooked onto, like, cocaine. Yeah. Um, oh, where is Give it? Give you some time to... Yes, the reefer madness part. Reefer madness, yes. Where, uh... Where she starts talking like a 1950s greaser for yeah. some reason. Fuck you, towny asshole. I'm gonna fly out of this town. I'm a greaser. You can bet your <laughs> ass on that. Don't bullshit me no more, townie. So um, how, come, how come Debbie is from the 1950s? <laughs> I don't know. But my favorite part is, um, she's getting really high. He, like, laces her soda with, with- like... PCP. Well, no, he just, uh, he, they did lines of coke. Oh, wait, no, um, it was PCP. Yeah, he, like, spiked her soda. Yeah, he spiked her soda. But she start. he asks her, you know, hey, how you doing? And she says, excellent. (laughs) X-C-E-L-L-E-N-T. That is not how you spell excellent. That is not how you spell excellent. How do you like my fucking towny talk? Excellent. excellent. Everything is excellent. That's three times in as say, many sentences. They say excellent several more times. After I know. That. Oh. It is so bad. Like, that... Maybe if it said, you know, scrawled on the school walls was excellent. excellent. But, but they didn't... People, when they say excellent, it's... That's how it sounds. I, I guess. You don't <laughs> need to drop the E. <laughs> so... It's the prose is all purple, but yes. then sometimes it gets really unpurple, like really oh, yeah. simple. Like, uh, turn to page thirty-eight for uh, me. Thirty-eight, thirty-eight, thirty-eight. Yeah. Oh yeah. When it says, "Danny did his thing with the beef eater." <laughs> <laughs> did his thing. <laughs> you know, we were talking about like heaving joggers and guttural foghorns yeah. and. Leaf disturbing breezes, and yeah, then Denny did. did Denny did his thing. Yeah, whatever. He just did his thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. Like switches between like Henry Miller and Ernest Hemingway. Exactly. On, like, a dime. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, it also blew its best scene way too early. Oh yes, I think that the, is the, the piranha scene. The piranha scene. Yeah, it comes in at page sixty four. I, I think they. I think if he was smart, he would have saved it for much later in the book. Like have it be a big. I think if he was smart, he would have a lot more murders in this book. Yes, a lot more, much more... Um, Graphic. Uh, imaginative murders. Yes. Like the Piranhas. The Piranhas is pretty imaginative. Yeah, outside of the Piranhas, it's just, oh, I'm going to lock you in the freezer. here, and I'm going to lock you in here. Yeah. And then I'm going to... Push you off the catwalk. Yeah, I'm going to drive off a cliff. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and that's it, and... I really wish there was more murder in this. Because, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, we already know Eric Toole is the murderer. It tells us right yeah. off the fucking and bat. It tells There's us, no mystery. And it tells us all of his backstory points. Yes. <laughs> and, okay, now how can he help, like, pull this plot along? Murder. That's, mur- that's what yeah. slasher flick villains more do. More murders. We that's, know about Mike Myers. We know why he kills people. That's how they pull the plot along. Just show him killing people. Like, have some suspenseful scenes, which I guess that was supposed to be the scene with Meg in her car. I guess so. But there's not enough of those, and no. that scene with Meg in her car is more stupid than anything. It really is. 
So all of Eric Toole's backstory points, we talked about this earlier. Yes. So his wife left him. Yes. His wife was a lesbian. Uh, girls kissing girls. Girls kissing, kissing girls, you. not kissing you. He's a Vietnam veteran. So yes. he's a, so 1980s, scary Vietnam veterans. That's a thing. Yeah, that's weird. Like He's also a foster home washout. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, he was in... He was in and out of foster homes as a kid. He yeah. went to Vietnam and is a creepy Vietnam veteran. So that's, that's unfortunate. He's a pure technical moral guardian. Yeah. And mm. he's obsess- an obsessive about the building. I think that there's way too many Here's points of interest there. Let, can, can, can we go into the, uh, how Tony is a famous architect because he designed a school? I think he's only famous to the to this town. Like he could have been famous in New York, but he got saddled with this kid and, and he, has to stay in Dorset. And while he was in Dorset, he designed, designed a, a high school. He designed a high school, and everyone loves him for it How in Dorset. Is that what does that high school look like? I need to know. It must be pretty amazing for everyone to love him I, and to uh, literally kill for him. Like. This avant-garde structure, what does it look like? Why is it so good? Like, <laughs> it's, it's great, a, too. Yeah, there's apparently some sort of ingenious drainage system with, yeah, the, with the pool. I, That's I don't, the most impressive thing that people actually talk about. Yeah, but, like, wherever he goes, they're like, Tony! Oh, you're such a good architect. Yeah. No one fucking does that. No, <laughs> No Uh, one cares about architects. I mean, sorry, any architect listeners out there. I mean, being an architect is cool. You're not really going to get famous for it. (laughs) I mean, and it's great because obviously the author didn't do any research because the only architect he name drops is Frank Lloyd Wright. Yeah. The one everyone knows. (laughs) Yeah. Like, okay, why does that make the school important? (laughs) The school is important because it's the scummiest high school in America. It is. <laughs> and, yeah, Eric Tool's like, creepy, like, they spray paint on the walls, like, Dorset High School sucks! Which is also, like, really 1950s yeah. or whatever. And he's all like, ooh, you fucking kids. You kids. Stop vandalizing this high school. I love Tony Palmer. I love Tony Palmer. I, I masturbate to this high school. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe, Maybe it's just... Li- Literally in love with the high school. But he goes off to another high school yes, at the end of the book. That's true. Maybe he has uh, some closeted homosexual feelings, and that's why he doesn't Maybe. like his wife being a lesbian, and he's really obsessive about Tony Palmer. There is no indication that he really is. No, not but really. But it would make... No, that wouldn't make for a compelling character, because I would just feel skeezed out that they made the homosexual <laughs> yeah, evil person. evil homosexuals. Is, that yeah, would, that would add mind. One, that would add one more... That point to the the, the too much backstory. Factor. That was yeah, that'd be too uh, too much. How about how does this book view drug culture? I uh, I guess it demonizes it. it. Demonizes it quite a bit. It has a lot of Reagan era scare, like yeah, scary drugs. Oh no! But it's also a thing where like. All the characters do drugs. Yeah. Like, they mention, like, very offhandedly, like, in the teacher's lounge. They all, like, they all smoked doobs. Yeah, and... Kit, I'm just gonna mention that the drug t- the druggy talk is really dorky. Yes. Everyone talks about doobs and, uh-huh. and scores and... Yeah. You know, th- I think doobs is the... <laughs> is, is, is the, the one that just sticks one. with you the most. Sticks with me. Um, and they don't bother to differentiate between... Different drugs. No. Not really. Not I think Coke at all. Coke and PCP basically do the same thing. Yeah. In in the Dorset High Averse. Yes. Um and, and that's also a part I really didn't like. When the drugs really got to the forefront, it just got really skeezy really yeah. fucking fast. So I've never been to a drug deal. <laughs> I'm gonna put that out there. But I wonder I don't think drug. I don't think every routine drug deal resembles the Burning Man concert, because <laughs> that's what happened. The, the, the big Chris Palmer's big drug dealing, Chris Palmer's big drug dealing scene is he goes down to the dunes and there's these kids like yeah, partying, just a big super like, hard. They can't stop raving. They can't stop. They rave. They're raving to the grave. 
some guy falls to his knees and goes, oh, let's see if I can actually find it, because it's pretty... Yeah. It's dumb. That big party, and he's just... What's up? I have some drugs. <laughs> One kid did a duck walk, then waddled like a penguin, and fell on the sand in front of the jeep, his arms held up in supplication. A hit, a hit for Allah. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me over the edge, master. Oh. So, I don't know why... How could ru- you not like that line? <laughs> routine. So, routine drug deals in Dorset apparently are just the Burning Man concert it's, every week. Yep. Yeah, I, I I don't know how Dorset as a town, like, functions. <laughs> I don't know. It, it really doesn't. Like, everyone's, like, whacked out of their mind. Everyone's an alcoholic. Everyone's a big piece of shit. Does it function because they just don't talk about it? I, I guess. I guess that's supposed to be, like... It's supposed to be, like, this small town where everyone knows each other, but just under the surface, there's this roiling undercurrent of repressed feelings and yeah. repression like that's coming to a boiling point and Eric Toole's murders are supposed to be like a little bit of steam getting let, let off. I guess, but There's Eric just... Toole's murders seem like they probably happen a lot more frequently than... I, t- yeah, <laughs> it seems like they would happen a lot more frequently. The, what I'm describing is what it would be if it was in a better book. Yes, if... He was walking in a field and he found an ear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, the drug part, it just got really weird really fast. Like, Chris has this little floozy with him, Debbie. Yeah, Debbie. And he, like, just gets her hooked on cocaine, he, like, right off the he bat. He seriously does. That's what, like, he gives her a free hit of cocaine. With, and the narration is saying... Haha, ha, now next time she'll pay for it. Yes, now you're addicted. Ha ha! <laughs> ah, that was trick gum. You're a piece of shit, Chris. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then it's just, they sneak into the school. And she spikes her drink with PCP for some reason. Yes. I don't think they, I guess, he, so he could date, date rape her, maybe? I, I don't think it was date rape. I think, um, I don't remember why. Were they just trying, was she, was he just trying to have fun? I, I really it, I, I really did spike her drink yes, for no yes. reason. I I don't remember why. I, I remember thinking, okay, maybe this is logical, but it's not. Yeah, because she has a PCP freak out, and she goes up into the, the catwalks. Yes. And Eric Toole is up there and pushes her off. I, I think he uh, did it because he wanted her to, like, come down from the cocaine, and I guess PCP did does that? Does I don't it? think it does. I, don't, I, I think that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost 100% sure that is bullshit. <laughs> I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've never done PCP. I've never done cocaine. I mean, aren't they both uppers? I think so, I, yeah. I think that would just get you higher. Yeah. Maybe he's all like, haha, this will be super fun. <laughs> You're still a piece of shit, Chris. Yeah. It's... So, what else do we want to talk about? How well... We've said the plot doesn't hang together. No. But that that is true from the very first chapter, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because Lillian Roberts would never, ever go anywhere near Eric. Because the first Fair scene... Enough. We come upon them. We don't know anything about these characters. It's Eric Toole and Lillian Robbins. We don't know she's a lesbian. We don't know he's a creepy woman-hating murderer. Yes. They're down on the dunes, like... He, Eric Toole drives her down to the dunes. They share a bottle of red wine. Uh huh. And then he's things start like getting heady. Hey, baby. He max on her, and she says no. And then he almost rapes her. Yeah. And then and then he doesn't, and he be, just because she's an evil. Her away. Because turns out she's an evil feminist. Yep. So. Why would he? Why would she ever go down to the the dunes with Eric Toole? Um, how are how were they friends? How did that happen? I have a feeling that I mean the I think author Eric, doesn't care. I mean, I, I guess what we're supposed to glean from that is that Eric Toole is supposed to be like the kind of sociopath that's super, super charming, but he's not. But he's not. He's not never, in the least. They he's never, never shown as super charming. No. Like, except around Tony. Yes. Except, Tony is the only person he's shown as being charming with. Yeah, and, like, 
everything else is them going like, oh, he must be... Maybe that's it. They're like, you must be a good person. Yeah. Because he hangs out with Tony, it's an our inf- legendary architect. Yeah, it's a very... It's an informed character trait, but not one that's shown. Yeah. And it... If you think about it, it makes the whole plot... The entire plot makes no sense, because from the very beginning, it starts off on the wrong foot. Yes. Um, what would you do to make this book better? Uh, well... I talked about the... What, do, do you have any pet theories for this book? Pet theories? Or something you would change to make it better? Like, more murders. More murders? I'd, I'd make it bloody. Okay. I'd make it as... I'd throw on the gore. Make a... I, that's just make it kind a, of an extra layer yeah. of sleaze, but... Yeah, but if you're going to go sleazy, make it as sleazy as possible. It's more of a fun sleaze rather than the rampant, like, woman-hating... Yeah, you, Make it so that there's some sort of outlet for the the audience to... Yeah. Unless you really want to go with the nihilist, like, everything is terrible. Yes. And here's why you should feel bad. I think Meg Malloy was supposed to be the one, like, the one genuinely good person. Yes. Like, she's the one who... She tells this story about how she got high on PCP and... Yes. And freaked out and almost jumped off a bridge and got rescued at the last minute. And that's why... She is does, dedicating her, is dedicating life, her to life to fighting and, drugs. Yeah, fighting drugs. War on drugs. So she has a good she has a good motivation. She's got a nice motivation. Yeah. She's a good person. She's also the worst character in the book because she's boring and yes. makes no sense and is an idiot. Uh huh. But I think if the they... first thing I would do is either cut out Meg cut out Meg Malloy completely and replace her with something better, or Cut her out, cut her out completely, and just let the entire book be completely nihilistic and gross. Or you can change her last name to Molloy with an O. Uh-huh. Focus the entire book on her, and just read Samuel Beckett's Molloy instead. There we go. That's good. How would you? How would you change the book? I I, I have a pet theory that I would also use to change the book. Um, Eric Tool. Also, his last name is Tool, T-U-L-E, and it's yes. kind of funny because he's the janitor. He's janitor. He uses tools. Yeah, I, I would change him to... Uh, he's also a huge tool. Oh. Hey, yo. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> I, I would change him to uh, Ernest of the Ernest Saves Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that that would make the... Ernest Power Tool. That's his, that's Ernest's middle, middle name. Okay. Worrell. That is how I would change this book. I would make him earnest. He's the <laughs> dumb, sweet, lovable guy, and he also murders and people. And he also murders people. That would have been funny if he was actually, like, lovable and jolly. And <laughs> he just kind of murders people, but he's... But he, every other time, he's fucking Santa Claus. Yeah, and he has, like, a rubber face and... <laughs> just... Jo- like, red, jolly cheeks and... Wacky... Noses like cherries or something. That's not exactly how Ernest is. No. And but but then it's great because then he could get caught at the end, and it could serve as a prequel for Ernest goes to jail. <laughs> That's why Ernest went to jail. Okay. I, I think they say why Ernest goes to jail in the movie, but fuck if I know. Yeah. One thing I want to mention: uh, uh, page one hundred and eighteen. One hundred and eighteen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me just uh, read this down for you. And you can tell me what you think of it. All right, all right. All right. Tony arrived in a navy blue button-down shirt, no tie, <laughs> dark blue sweater, khakis and dockciders. Oh, yeah. And he threw on a tweed jacket. Oh, keep going. <laughs> I wrote down Jai's fashion plate. <laughs> <laughs> that That is like my ideal fashion sense. <laughs> Just the tackiest of clothing. Sweater, Cosby sweaters, and tweed. Yep, that's that's my fashion. <laughs> if, if anyone out there wants... Wants to know what I find fashionable. It's really tacky sweaters. <laughs> it's true. It Sw- really is true. Sweaters, tweed jackets, khakis. Ooh. <laughs> just gets me hot and bothered. Uh, would you... Would you... I know the answer to this, but would you recommend this book? You know, I'm a bit torn on this one. Oh? Because I do find it just so, like, over-the-top terrible that I want people to know... How bad a book can get. It's one yeah, of those that's a books. Good corollary. And I don't think it's like. Do you, would you like to know how not to write a book? Here, yes. read Night Watcher. 
it's it's not as much of a slog as like I don't think it's as much of a slog as like Slocum's Run actually. Yeah, or uh, the yeah Slocum's I, Run. I I think it's it's a bit more exciting in just how backwards and awful it is. Yeah. It, th- th- there's no, like, gray areas of, oh, this is going to be good. It's just straight up bad all the yeah, way through. bad all the time. And I don't know. It's not a good book. It it's is not. not. Do not read this if you want a good book. No. All right. I'll, I'll change my answer. I was going to say no and an emphatic no at yes. that. But I think I'll change my answer. If you want to know how not to write a book, <laughs> you should read this book. And do everything. I that wouldn't did. pay money for this book. Though. No, don't pay money. Don't pay over like a dollar for this book. <laughs> no. If you find it for fifty cents, yeah, this by is, all means, this is one of the chuckle at it. This is one of the two cents on Amazon books. Yes, but that purchases that's like shipping and handling. That's like four dollars. So <laughs> yeah, true. That's way too much for this book. Um, maybe he put published it as an ebook because that's kind of what the author does now. I guess. Yeah. The author of very much a dad, very much... We shouldn't get too much into his life. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not bring the author yeah. too much into this. We hate the book. We don't necessarily hate the guy. No, he, he seems like a jolly old dad. Yeah. He seems, I mean, very much like gone home dad where... <laughs> right. That, I, I think that's one of the things I we mentioned when I said, you know, hey, he's a dad author. <laughs> yeah. And it's, if you've ever played the game Gone Home. Gone Home, yeah. The, the father, and that's a failed author, and he wrote just really bad, like, Books genre about... fiction. Yeah. And that's what this guy does. Basically, yes. Yeah, I I think this book is great in the <laughs> sense that it's obscure, it's really bad, it's a book that's been forgotten. Yes, it truly has been forgotten. This guy really is a Kilgore Trout of our our age. Yes, th- he's the reason why we started this podcast. <laughs> to find an author that has been yeah. forgotten to the times. He has some very faint good ideas, if only he could write. Yes, but alas, but it's alas. a bad book. We have not found the elusive forgotten author that has written a great book yet. Yeah. I give it a uh, zero dead lesbians out of a rainbow. <laughs> that is my. Well, that's a obtuse rating scale. Yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, you know. There's the there's the rainbow of dead lesbians. I give it zero of them. All right, I give it one Garth Marenghi novel <laughs> out of eight episodes of Dark Place. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. I I think that kind of wraps up this episode. Uh, We have been Two Trouts. I'm David. And I'm Jai. Our week's author has been James James F. Murphy Jr. (laughs) And uh, we'll see you later. Yes. Farewell. Farewell. Keep judging books by their covers.